Councillor Matlow. Um, yeah, Madam, Madam Speaker, colleagues, uh, the priority, the, the item is... Um, On page 10, MM 31.1, members motion, motion standing up together for Toronto. Okay, Councillor Matlow. Madam Speaker, through you, uh, colleagues, I, I, I strongly suggest that this is the time to get back to the table and work with both the provincial and the federal counterparts on funding our priorities. Uh, the transit files and the housing files are far too important to play games with. Um, there are times when we need to challenge the other orders of government when we don't believe that they are fulfilling their role and their responsibilities and contributing their part. There are other times where we need to sit down and try to resolve differences and work as partners to be able to achieve results. This is that moment. I don't begrudge anyone who has said that they are concerned about the dearth of funding for some of our <clears throat> priorities. But this kind of action is a newsletter action. This is a newsletter action. Led by Councillor Mamalini. This isn't helpful. What this does is that it, it, it just sends a signal that we want to go to war and get into a fight. So what does the province do? For example, we're waiting for more housing funds. We're waiting for the uh, relief line announcement. Does this speed up those announcements? If you're, if, you're, if you're at the Premier's office, if you're at the provincial government level, you see this approved by council, and then you see a big campaign going at you. You must do this right now, because we are council and we say you must. Do you, do you hold a press conference the next week and make an announcement about housing funds or transit funds? When you look like you're actually capitulating to the demands of the city, telling you that you've got to do that right now? Is that even good politics? Never mind the right thing to do. I don't think it's helpful. So please do away with this. There are people. Okay, just who one sec. Just one sec, please. Councillor Davis. Oh. Councillor Crawford, how can we hear if everyone's talking? Please. Okay, go ahead. I believe there are people at every order of government, both ours, oh, ours, along with the provincial government, along with the federal government, who totally and completely understand how deeply important funding affordable housing is. There is no doubt, and you know, I've, I have strong differences about where both the city and the province has allocated many of the transit funds. Very strong differences of opinion. But I think it's inarguable that the province has contributed billions of dollars towards transit uh, projects here in the city of Toronto. That's inarguable. It's just a fact. So let's bring down the temperature. Let's get back to the table and let's try to work out resolutions that will finally contribute to both expanding the transit priorities that we have along with the relief line, hopefully the waterfront ORT projects as well, and other projects that we deem uh, necessary and urgent, and focus so importantly on the social housing stock, which is a, it's a priority to us all, every single one of us. But I just don't believe that sort of pushing it in this way is going to actually end up with the result that we want. I believe that there are partners at the provincial level who want to sit down and work with us. Let's focus on that first. Don't buy into this, please. Okay, the last speaker is Mayor Tory. With respect to uh, the first uh, speech that was made here by the councillor for Ward 22 through you, Madam Speaker, I would only say that he, and I think it was repeated subsequent to what he said, is that this is some kind of a campaign aimed at two levels of government. That's actually factually incorrect. It's aimed at one. Because the, you did say that. We could check the record if you wish. 
But the, the bottom line is that there's only one government that has not come to the table at all. And we can question the adequacy of what the federal government has come forward with. And there'll be more news in the next couple of days about what they're doing on phase two of their transit, the federal government that is. But the bottom line is on transit, we're going to be receiving billions, billions of new dollars from them. We've already see, received hundreds of millions which allowed us to buy the buses that we bought. And on housing, we're going to receive uh, substantial hundreds of millions of dollars. And as hundreds of millions, we, 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 we will not have received were it not for their efforts. And guess how that happened? That happened as a result of a concentrated effort made by the big city mayors, of which I am one, and was proud to play a leadership role on behalf of this city and other cities across Canada to relentlessly advocate to the federal government and all federal political parties during the period running up to the federal election we just went through. And I will tell the councillor for Ward 22 in particular, who is impliedly critical of my efforts in this regard, by saying, well, there's more to be done sitting at a table. I have been to dozens of private meetings with the... Just let me speak. You had your turn. I, I've been to dozens of meetings with the Premier of Ontario. I've been to dozens of meetings with the ministers of the government. I've sat down with the caucus from the uh, City Mayor, of Toronto, Mayor, the Liberal caucus from the City of Toronto. Mayor, I have Mayor, met with the minister... Mayor, hold on. Councillor Matt Lowe's getting up on a point of order. Uh, no, uh, the mayor is speaking for me, suggesting that I'm implying things. It's not all about the mayor. I wasn't talking about the mayor. And I asked that the mayor withdraw his comment. Councillor Matt Lowe, that's not a point of personal Yes, it is. The, yes, it is, Madam Speaker. No, the mayor just said that I was implying things about him and his intent and his motivation. I did not mention him and I did not imply anything about him. I said collectively, we need to get back to the table. This is not about him or his oversensitivities at this point. Councillor Matlow, please. When you spoke, you referenced the mayor. Yeah. And the mayor's entitled to his opinion. Okay. Sorry, there is no point no. simply that the mayor refrain from characterizing my comments in any way that are untrue. I'm not, I'm not allu alluding or implying things about him as a person. West. And I don't do that. Hey. It's a request. Okay, come. Mayor, can you continue, please? Madam Speaker, the bottom line is, uh, you know, the member for Ward 22 uh, may want to just concede and have us sit here in this council chamber after dozens of meetings have been held on all accounts. I don't know how many meetings he's had or others have had in here or letters they've written. I'd be interested in seeing the file. But having said all that, I need your help. I need your help. And all it is is saying that we are exploring options to run a campaign. And there's 90 days before the report even comes back on those options. And in those 90 days, I'm actually very hopeful we can be invited to a table. We can be invited to a table. I've gone to the table, I would tell you if I said 50 times with different people, and, and I'm terribly sorry that I haven't been able as yet uh, to, to have success in putting across a case that I think is so straightforward in terms of the need of the most vulnerable people in our city to have the help of a government that has the tools at its disposal. And we went forward with road tolls. We went forward with road tolls, and this council showed a lot of courage in standing up and saying, we will put that forward to voters who might not have all found it entirely popular. And I did that, I led on that with the strong public and private encouragement of the premier of this province and other people. And then they pulled the rug out from underneath this city in terms of our own self-determination and, and to appease, frankly, the 905 and for political purposes. And we could have solved a lot of these problems if we'd had access to that money and quite frankly, been accountable for it as a city council that was for the first time in years been prepared to stand up and be, be, be responsible for our actions, be accountable and collect the money we need. And I'm now saying that a mo motion not moved by me, but by Councillor Mamaliti that says we explore options for a campaign that can go forward and inform the public better about the fact that these tenants, after an investment of a billion dollars of money derived by the City of Toronto and some money now to come from the federal government, needs the partnership of the province of Ontario to move forward and do what is right and to do it the right way, which is not to do it through property taxation alone because property taxes weren't meant for that. And if it means, quite frankly, that we need a new deal, then the campaign might say so. But the notion we should just go into a corner and kind of sit there and wait around timidly and sort of see if maybe they might decide to give us some money or maybe not is unacceptable to me. It doesn't involve standing up for Toronto and the most vulnerable people of this city. And those who advocate that should be ashamed of themselves. Thank and I urge members to support this motion, Madam Speaker. Hey. Now, we do have questions for you. Any question Councilor you like? Matlow. Oh, 
Oh, this will be good. Councillor Matlow, questions? <laughs> no, I, re I realize it's not worth it. No. Oh. Councillor Mammoliti, questions? Oh, sorry, we didn't chickens yet? Councillor Mammoliti, questions? I I'm actually quite happy standing beside you and you supporting my motion, Mr. Mayor, because you actually, you, it, it may be the, one of the first times, yes? And, 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 and you're the one, did you not, that asked me, uh, maybe the last time we stood up and debated, I think it was on tolls or something, that someone come up with their, their own idea uh, with respect to what it is we should do? I, I may well have done, I probably did. And I think, again, I mean, this is not the only idea. This is not the only way to go about this, but I'm just, I will continue to try on sitting at the tables privately and going to the meetings when they're held. Uh, we actually tried quite recently to send an emissary uh, to talk about sitting at a table and trying to work something out, and uh, we were met with kind of bafflement as if well, there was nothing to discuss. And so I just think this preparing of options here, as you've requested, I think quite reasonably by the city manager, who's a public servant, can look at how we might put our message across, is a reasonable request, and that's why I was happy to and support it. And it does help you, right? If the city of Toronto passes uh, something in the way of uh, an endorsement for you to be going out there and saying we need more money. It does help you, right? It, it, it's, it, you're not alone out there in your shorts. I have asked, <laughs> I, have asked in, uh, I have asked in this chamber, uh, I've asked more than once for help from you. And certainly on the day we decided together to move forward with the road tolls, there was lots of help in this room. There were a few people opposed, but by and large we sent a very strong signal that we were prepared to stand up and say we were going to do something. And since that time, I've asked for your help, for the help of the council in trying to put our message forward. And there are some who've actually been of some help. And there are others who, I guess, advocate a completely different course of action, which involves us just going off into the corner and deciding we're going to throw in the towel. I'm not throwing in the towel for the people who live in Toronto Community Housing or for the City of Toronto, because I think that we are being shortchanged badly. And I think that we need to rectify that. Yeah. So uh, have you... Uh, I'm not suggesting at all that this is, this is the reason why I've taken them down, but have you, have you crossed uh, my office lately? The, the cartoons are down. Oh, what about the puppets? No, I haven't been there recently, but okay. I'll certainly make a trip by. Please.